welcome to Nosgoth News Network uh, NNN. It's our new feature, which we uh, we hope will become uh, semi-regular as uh, as things are happening in the Legacy of Cain community. Um, after years of baseless rumours, we've finally got something to talk about. Um, so Yay. I thought I'd summon Raina Audrin to, to come before us and um, we can go through some of the things that are happening in the community today. Um, so, obviously, kicking off, the main news is that Embracer Group has bought the Legacy of Kane IP, or, or is planning to buy the Legacy of well, Kane IP. It's in the progress. It's, uh, it's in progress. They have made an agreement with Square Enix for that, that uh, IP to be moved on, um, along with, uh, what's it, Thief, Deus Ex, Tomb Raider. and Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, what's that? I've not, I've not heard of that game before. That's... Uh, something about a cookbook I oh, should have brought no. it <laughs> um, anyway obviously the uh, the IP in the past has been um, moved around a few times uh, famously in the in the 90s there was a rather mm. messy court case um, before it went to ADOS um, SCI and then Square Enix uh, and so now we are moving once again on to um, Embracer Group who are uh, a Swedish um, Investor Group. Hold, investor Group, holding, <laughs> yes, yeah. hold, holding company. Um, they own the likes of THQ Nordic. In fact, they sort of sprung out of THQ Nordic, mm -hmm. as it were. It's um, the most famous Darksiders series. Yes, yeah. They, they kind of, they're the ones that made um, War Mastered Edition and Definitive um, Darksiders 2. Yeah. So um, they, they do have um, background um, in... Um, in Picking up old IPs and, and um, shining them up and doing some new things with them, so it's a mm. it's a it's an exciting time to be uh, a Legacy of Kane fan. Uh, they have quite a big portfolio of games too, so it's not just Darksiders. Um, there's also a uh, Duke Nukem, Goat Simulator, <laughs> Dead Island, Time Splitters, Borderlands, of course, um, Kingdoms of Amalur, which I think wasn't successful when it came out, but they republished it. Um, World War Z, and they have um, loads of employees overall. Um, yeah, something like 124 studios. Um, apparently, 230 games in development at the moment. So, so that's a very impressive list. Apparently, 30 AAA games. Um, some of those have been hinted to be revivals of, uh, mm. of known projects. So uh, we'll see uh, what they do going forward. It looks like they've acquired, along with uh, sort of our games, uh, over 50 um, of the uh, former ADOS IPs. So um, there's a there's a lot mm. to going on there. Is there going to be a new Gex? <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> um, obviously, it's a it's a bit of a, a an interesting time. Um, we we've uh, talked to various contacts. It, it sounds like uh, outside of those making the deals. There may not have been many um, in the Square Enix studios who were informed of what was going on. Um, so, um, not necessarily the most happy with the news. But, mm. um, I mean, we know that there are, there are good people at, at Square Enix, people who have um, stood up to bat for, for Legacy of Kane in the past. Um, and we know that Square sort of periodically reviewed the the, the, um, the franchise while it was there they didn't have the best record with uh, with uh, bringing games to term mm. uh, and within the last few years the public image uh, of what's been going on at Square perhaps hasn't been the best um, the, the, obviously there were there were some quite high profile things about their sales expectations being yeah. shall Tomb we say Raider, a tad yeah. unrealistic Tomb Raider not making enough Stuff yeah, like that. and uh, and their recent forays into the blockchain and uh, NFTs. NFTs, which are not necessarily popular. Um, but having down. said that, um, the, it that's kind of mm. higher ups within the company. Um, at ground level, they were they did have a lot of good mm. people. So but, uh, we wish those people well, and uh, obviously we. But it's also interesting that they didn't sell everything. That they keeping three franchises looks like Outriders, Life is Strange, also for Just Cause and Sleeping Dogs. 
So it remains to be seen if Embracer will think, oh, we want those two, or is Square holding on to them? I don't, don't want to give them em, away. Embracer did seem to hint that this wasn't all there was to it. There would be more um, later on that they were grabbing up. Um, interestingly, you, you mentioned Gex before. Gex is one of those that's uh, in, a, in, a, in a funny little chasm. Mm. It was already hinted to be getting uh, a revival, and it was Square Enix that trademarked the name. So mm. presumably that would have to be transferred over were it to be coming. You would assume that since Gex is so synonymous with Crystal and Ados that it would be one of those that will be coming over. Mm -hmm. But that would have to be doing some yeah. um, moving across. Um, all right, what else have we got? Um, I guess it's interesting to note that obviously they acquired, acquired Crystal Dynamics, Ados Montreal and Square Enix Montreal and they all uh, Square Enix Montreal specializes in mobile games like Lara Croft Go and Diasex Go and all sorts of uh, Hitman. So they were all um, quite good games. They were quite good games. Mm. Um, then we obviously have Crystal, which we already we know are working on the newest uh, Tomb Raider game on Unreal Engine Five, um, ditching their old en CDC engine, um, which was also used in all of Legacy of Kane games and Gex. Mm. Um, yes, actually, they they and they've, the um, Tomb Raider Survivor trilogy and. Uh, the reboot trilogy from um, yeah, it's a, a, one years, of the, the one years. of the bits that came out a little while ago was was um, essentially saying that moving forward they will be moving over to um, the Unreal Engine from uh, what was the Gex Engine or the Foundation Engine mm -hmm. um, that's been running with them all the way since um, Gex three is it or Gex two Gex two Gex two. So uh, uh, a long, long, long-running uh, game engine mm. which, which has the now sort of uh, passed away, unfortunately. Um, we're, we're, I'll press F to show my respects. Um, <laughs> so um, it, it, it's an interesting time to see what, what's, what's going forward, um, who's doing what. Don't necessarily expect Embracer to run in and just um, go... Oh, you did Darksiders. Um, mm. That may not be what they do. Don't forget, they've they've got some studios who probably chomping at the bit to have a have a bite of those cherries. So you may well find it. It doesn't get picked straight across to go to. to we might to need THQ to wait. Nordic. Yeah, we might need to wait a bit before any announcement from the mm -hmm. games they acquire. They'll actually start working on. So. Um, mm. A bit more waiting, but we can do it, right? We waited 25 years or 20 years or something. Yeah, so there's uh, plenty of reason to be hopeful, um, as Kane once said. So, um, um, there's something else we have to yes. announce. Yeah, uh, moving on to, to other news. Um, obviously, those of you who follow us will know we've got quite a large um, uh, catalogue of um, archived materials mm. and um, manuals and guides and, and things like that. Um, today we've, uh, we, uh, well, recently we've plugged in uh, the last big gap yeah, uh, in that thing, um, the uh, Soul Reaver scripts. Yeah. And that here's a copy right here. I don't know if you can read it. No, uh, and my printer's awful. Um, but... Um, that is the last big, uh, big uh, piece we were missing. Um, we have a lot of uh, all of the other scripts here. Some of them with annotations and mm -hmm. all sorts of uh, Stage interesting directions. missing bits. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this one, it, it, interestingly enough, has some bits that are quite familiar. Mm. Um, so it's it's likely that parts of this were out in the um, in the fandom in the 90s and the early noughties without necessarily being identified as scripts. Um, it seems this one comes fairly late in development. So yeah, it, I think it's, it's almost pretty much retail script. There mm -hmm. is, I think, one difference in wording, or a couple differences in wording, but um, it's pretty much identical. It has Tomb Guardian, there's no cut content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it does have staged directions which we didn't have from before so um there is really some interesting stuff such as the uh, the sanctuary is described as dome of the rock 
which is really interesting because they actually did use some textures from this um, architectural structure nice. uh, in the game. So it's um, and it's a mosque, so it's appropriate. Um, but the script also describes certain things, like such as the feelings of characters and the way the the, uh, the facial mm -hmm. um, emotions would be conveyed and. and Explicitly, Kate says that Kane isn't surprised by Raziel's wings. There, there just is in like, case you were, yeah, you doubt exactly. It. It's not. He's never been surprised. He he knew it was coming. Um, so it kind of looks like a jealous anger, but it's not. Um, there is one interesting part about the original version of Ariel was a lot more unhinged, almost crazy, sobbing, mm -hmm. sounding or a person who just. Yeah, who's just crazy, basically. <laughs> and she, we we she, did have um, we can... alpha um, sound files, which uh, which had her uh, breaking down in tears and sobbing. Um, this furthers that, follows it up, and says that she's explicitly meant to be a little unhinged. They toned her down a lot in the final game, so um, there's not much yeah. trace of it. So she's just enigmatic instead. Mm -hmm. But yeah, originally she was meant to be a lot more um, unstable sounding. And maybe Raziel <laughs> would be too uh, perplexed by her instability that he wouldn't <laughs> give in to her, uh, her direction. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, you're crazy. <laughs> I won't listen to you. Um, another thing which is interesting is uh, the uh, description of Zephon's room, or Zephon himself is basically described as a praying mantis uh, who's tethered to the ceiling by masses of webbing which is kind of shown in the game but not really, it's, it's a bit hard to see because his four legs are tethered to the ceiling but the webbing yeah. is maybe not as apparent as it's, mm -hmm. it's not being paid att much attention to when you play the game, it's more the camera is showing his body his, uh, which is attached to the wall yeah. at the back and to his head but um, it, which I thought was quite interesting He's, he's usually described to as a, or looks like an alien queen. queen. <laughs> Xenomorph. Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, what else do we have? Uh, Rahab's room is described as a chapter house. Which if, is, you're, uh, if you're familiar with, uh, with Soul Reaver 2, um, the room where um, Vorador's murals of the slaughter of the circle is a chapter house, the room where um, Raziel... Um, is memorialized and his memorialized, brethren yeah the seraphim memorial chapel that's a chapter house as well mm -hmm. so uh, the same sort of structure within a religious a building, circular building mm -hmm. that's where rahab decided to make his nest um, um, yeah. so uh, interesting choice there mm -hmm. uh, rahab, rahab himself i mean it's one of the things that's um it's in the model but you can't see it very well um they mention it in the script uh he has vestigial legs hanging from his torso I can see little legs, legs like underneath <laughs> on his tummy. Like that. Um, if you yeah, if you extract the model, you can actually zoom in and you can see those legs are still there. Mm -hmm. So um, um, he's also described as mildly unhinged. <laughs> uh, just mildly so this just, time. Just mildly, uh, not not quite as not, full not on as Ariel, Ariel levels. No, no, just <laughs> slightly more. I'm swimming around in a small fish bowl. Let me have uh, enough it's space to swim. <laughs> But there is door to the no, outside. No one so. can overstock fish tanks in our presence. <laughs> um, um, and the last one is, I guess, Duma, who's uh, described as less devolved as the others because he was murdered centuries before the others, So, which we kind of already suspected. Yeah, it's something that was in the behind-the-scenes interviews and things like that, but again, the script makes it 100% clear that was their intention um, from the beginning. Um, so yeah, there's uh, lots of interesting things um, there. We'll, we'll, we yeah. will um, put the script um, in, will be in, the in, in the description yeah. along with our sources archive. There's a, there's plenty of magazines and guides and, and everything an LK fan could want in those. Um, along with um, a few other things that we've got uh, coming up, you may be able to see over my shoulder just up that way. Um, there is a, a, a map of Nosgoth. 
Um, one of the new features that's come to the wiki um, recently is the introduction of interactive maps, um, mm. something that they've been uh, working on uh, at the wiki for a, for a little while, or, or at fandom for a little while. Um, they've now uh, unlocked those, turned those on. Um, I've been playing around for a little bit. I think I've got the main sort of gist of it going down, and I've started to, to put in some maps. So the overall world map is, is essentially done now. Um, you'll be able to, to find that in, in the wiki. I'll, I think we'll put a, yeah, put a link. link to that in there as well. Um, moving on, moving through that, there'll be sort of several levels, I think, going through. Um, so you can go indoors as well and you yeah, can see I've, what's I've, inside the... I've worked on a, a, at least one area where you can, you can sort of, a, in essence, click on a house and go, what's in there? Um, and click on an area and go, uh, go to the next map and, and move through it that way. Um, it may take quite a while to do that for all of the games, but I, I'll be working. Which on one did you do? For the it moment? was Corhagen. I've got at the moment. Um, I've put on all, all the all the dungeons, all the businesses. So the Bloodland map is the overworld is that? Or yes, well, <laughs> it hasn't got all of the uh, individual area right. maps linked, um, but it has got right. um, basic. Uh, links to articles mm -hmm. and things like that right. in there so it's still work in progress but yeah. um Baz yeah. will be adding more and more to it and there's also i think soul reaver map you added as well uh the, the but that's in soul reaver 2 and the blood omen 2 ones um i haven't added oh, okay. the soul reaver one as yet i need to um, look into permissions for that because soul reaver and defiance didn't have official um official world maps um, funnily enough, no, neither did the Nosgoth one. That one is um, mm. a, a special by um, our, our good friend Patrick Johnson Hilden, um, who um, did the uh, famously did the uh, with the Nosgoth sort of semi-official map, which is um, hanging on our wall, which is which is on the wall above me. Um, so um, yeah, that's um, that's all looking quite nice there. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll have more of that coming forward. Uh, and of course, obviously, we've, we've just finished the uh, the Blood Omen Alpha video series. Um, there'll be more um, coming through from that as well. I'll, I'll start um, adding some of the details into articles mm -hmm. soon. So, and um, the next video coming up will be Ariel from the Arcane Tomes, because now people have been asking where are they coming back. So, uh, Baz now did his first Arcane Tom on his own, so it will be his <laughs> cre his creation. <laughs> it will it will be there soon soon i think i've got ariel in the bag and um another one coming up and we'll he's already writing on a new one so we'll keep um, that one a mystery for now and we'll, yes we'll get there soon. so there's something to look forward to don't worry there's more vid videos coming um i'm not wor working on any videos at the moment unfortunately but um that's mystery. a good reason for it uh you shall so see soon enough i think <laughs> <laughs> and I guess and um, I think that is that everything it. we have? I think so for yes. the moment. Um, thank thanks to Lucy for the uh, cane cape, which um, we used for a little decoration. And, uh, and our friend up in the corner. Over and there. the bust as well oh, above my head. <laughs> yeah. And of course, our our our, um, our artwork on our walls is by Daniel Kabuku and Laura Panikow. Thank you both for the artwork. Anyway, it was nice hopefully seeing you guys, and yeah, see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.